So when thought ceases to come, meaning complete silence of the mind, that's your experience of death. So what experiences death? That what experiences life? We are timeless. We are a timeless dimension. A singular moment. A pulse that never beats. But something mysterious, mis magical, unexplainable, unimaginable takes place. And boom, voila. We're here. But we only know we're here because we have a mind or a brain that stores thoughts. And the thoughts are made up. They're all made up. They're all calculated. They're all, all born through sound. Through all the senses. These thoughts come and go. And when this body appears to die, well, the thoughts go with it. The, the, the personal me, the idea that I exist goes with it. This is what we know already. So we have a choice to make. The mind has a choice to make. Do I make the best out of this life? Because I can't afford to think about what comes after. Because time is so limited. The idea of living is itself the same as the idea of dying. When you realize this timeless dimension is not neither living nor dying, There's an experience of silence, of peace. Where well, there appears to be nothing taking place. But within it, something is taking place. If you remove both of these thoughts, something taking place and nothing taking place, that's it your reality, not the one that removes the two, but the one was that, that was there before the two appeared. This timeless dimension, which I call zero dimension, cannot be identified or explored or shared because that what tries to explore it, identify it or share it is a thought, is another idea or me, the person, the body. Time cannot explore timelessness. Timelessness cannot explore time. Beyond both of these states, and both are states. A deep sleep, timelessness. That's not the truth. That's not what we are. Awake, time. That's not the truth. That's not what we are. To say I'm going to live this life is the same as saying I'm going to die in this life. There's a fluctuating on that line in the hospital, flat line, up, down, up, down, up, down. Living, dying, living, 
dying. Can you remove, what, what can remove these living and dying concepts? What can say I'm living and what can say I'm dying? Only the thoughts. These thoughts are meaningless, they're trivial. And when the body passes, transcends, stops breathing, stops operating, the brain shuts down and these thoughts go. All the associations, the attachments, the beliefs, the relationships, the names, the identities, the information, all thoughts, all man-made, all not true. The mind finds it extremely difficult to say the thought that I love my children is not true. But the timeless dimension is beyond love. In fact, it's, it is love. The rest is just a makeshift, make belief, try and live out this life as best as we can love. So we create our own types of love. The body creates its own type of relationships with other bodies. Sex, another concept, another idea. Birth, just an ongoing infatuation by this mind. When the mind goes, when the thoughts go, you go. But something is much, much, much more realistic than that, than this. And you can experience it now. When the thought goes, will it go? It's dying. It's dead. You can experience it in the breaths. In breath, living. Out breath, dying. We have a mind to say, we can experience that profoundly because we know we're going to in breath again unless something takes you away coincidentally at that untimely effort of dying. They say that we, we die before we die. That's enlightenment. That's a whole thing dying. That's a whole timeless dimension. <coughs> but we can experience moments of it when each thought dies. But you don't say farewell to that thought that dies. You just say thank you. You can go. <laughs> and it passes. It's not a great subject, death for the mind. It doesn't like the subject, death. But right now, mind doesn't like the subject, life. Because life seems to be suffering, painful. Because we're looking for a better quality of life. And we're looking for better quality of death when it comes. I don't want to have my body sliced up into pieces in an accident. I want to just die in my sleep. I want that quality of death. I want to die peacefully. But I want to live, wow, but joyfully. I want to live <coughs> in complete laughter and happiness and joy and overwhelming bliss. And we cannot, mind cannot attain or more so maintain that infatuating quality. Hey, excuse me, I have a dry throat, a pollen. Death is in every moment, but life is in every moment. 
It's just the idea that we can measure one against the other. I prefer life to death. Some say I prefer death to life. Look, remove the preferential thought. There is no life. There is no death. That's why when the enlightened non-dual awakened being comes onto YouTube and says nothing is happening. There's nothing living and there's nothing dying. Don't use the word nothing because it's the opposite of something. <coughs> it's just that we have a mind and thoughts that create something strange about what we are, what we do, and where we appear to be going. That's why all these great saints, these great sages, they go beyond I am. Beyond I am is beyond me, beyond this person, beyond this world, beyond the universe, beyond consciousness, beyond I, beyond the tower. But one thing you cannot go beyond is the moment. Only one moment where all these things take place. This moment is the timeless dimension. But when you die, and when the thought dies, for a split second, everything becomes one. Everything returns to that place of non-duality. Non-non-duality. Non-non. Non-duality. Not even duality, not even fourth dimension, sixth dimension, ninth dimension. These are all concepts and ideas to keep you thinking. Life has to be lived. There is no liver of life. There's no dire of death. God, whatever God is, has to be that moment. Has to be this moment. Beyond silence, through silence. Beyond galaxies and cosmos, through galaxies and cosmos. Go through death. Go through life. Remove both. This body will not suffer. It will not be in pain because it still remains here, living. Because the body lives. The body dies. The mind lives, the mind dies. The one moment that we all are collectively never lives and never dies. What can that state be like? Is that a state? Or is the speaker making a big, big mistake? Muji made a beautiful video. How do you live your day? Muji answers, I don't live my day. I am my day. My day lives me. My day lives as if it's reflecting that what one is, that one moment is. Life is taking care of itself. Death is taking care of itself. The moment never takes care of itself. It doesn't have to. It is infinite. It is immortal. It is presence. It is here. It is now.